Did you know that with a standard tabletop centrifuge, there are only two numbers of identical samples that you can't spin, at least not without the entire thing shuddering and your lab mate yelling at you to turn it off. And that this trick can help you with everything from playing on a playground to making dinner. Hi, my name is Susanna Harris, and this is the Science of Lab Safety, brought to you by Lab Safety Specialists. You probably already know there are certain rules you need to follow in a laboratory, but you might not know why you need to follow those other than to avoid getting into trouble. We're going to explore the exciting, the unexpected, and sometimes even the scary facts behind the science of lab safety. To figure out how many samples we can load into a centrifuge without the entire thing threatening to rumble off the table, we have to first understand a concept called centrifugal force. Centrifugal force is the apparent outward force on a mass when it is rotated. It's apparent or even fictitious because the force is observed, not directly applied. But it's absolutely real and you've definitely felt it when you're in the car and it takes a turn and you feel your body being pulled to the outside of the turn. From centrifuges to washing machines to spinning tops, centrifugal force is related to how steadily and consistently the object spins. The key to this balance is more balance. This is what we call a very well-balanced top where all of the different sides are equal weight. Because of how balanced this top is, we can spin it and see that there is no wobbling going on. And this will allow the top to keep spinning for a very long time. But what if we add a little bit of weight to this top just on one side? We see a lot more variation in how the top is spinning because of the weight on just one side. So let's go ahead and add just a little more weight, but on the opposite side. With the weight distributed across both sides, the top is again balanced and can spin for a long time. Now, having this little top tip over is maybe not a big problem because it costs just a few dollars and won't break. However, your centrifuge in the lab probably costs more on the order of tens to even hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you don't really want that one to break down. How can we stay safe when we're using the centrifuge? First, you'll want to figure out how fast you need your sample to be going and check that your rotor is specified for that speed. RPM on the rotor stands for revolutions per minute, and this is how centrifuge manufacturers generally describe how fast the centrifuge is going, whereas RCF stands for relative centrifugal force and is measured by the g-force experienced by the sample. You're going to want to check your manuals and the limits on your equipment. Second, make sure your sample fit snugly and won't open or spill. You need to make sure to use the right containers, ones that can withstand the force of spinning in a centrifuge. Third, weigh your samples carefully. You want them to all weigh approximately the same amount and even different tubes will have slightly different weights. And lastly, let's go back to that idea about balance and finally answer that question of what is the cool trick that we can all use to make sure to spin as many samples as possible. First of all, could you guess how many samples you can't spin in a centrifuge? I told you there's only two options. The first option is one sample because you can't balance that out. And the second option is 23 out of 24 samples. What's going on here? We know that a pair of samples, if they are the same weight, can be across from each other and balance out the centrifuge. This can also be used in the inverse where you fill all of the spaces except for pairs of open spaces across from each other. But how do we balance odd numbers of samples? The trick about balancing a centrifuge is distributing the weight equally across the centrifuge. While we can do this with pairs, we can also take triads of samples and distribute them equally. If we have three samples, all we have to do is make sure that there are the equal number of open slots between all three of the samples. We can then add pairs across from each other until we fill up the spaces. The lessons learned from balancing a centrifuge are surprisingly applicable to everyday life. For instance, on a playground, if you take children who are equally sized, you can distribute them evenly across a merry-go-round. Similarly, if you're preparing dinner and need to wash off some cherry tomatoes, you can put them in your salad spinner and distribute them evenly around the perimeter. If you're doing laundry, you want to make sure that your towels are opposite of each other. And again, if we want to use it for the lab, make sure your samples are balanced in that centrifuge. 